ahead. Hey, I'd like to call back to order the uh, special Wednesday, uh, August 12th, 2020, uh, Pima Community College Governing Board meeting. Uh, we're reconvening our open uh, session of our with our regular meeting items. The first item is 4.1 COVID-19 liability endorsement for third party liability claims. Mr. Sylvan, if you could go ahead and read the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and with your permission, um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna modify the recommendation that's printed on the agenda just a bit to reflect uh, the additional um, acknowledgement form element uh, input that we've received. Great. So with that, uh, the recommendation is, the chancellor recommends that the governing board authorize the chancellor or designee to execute an endorsement to the liability coverage provided by the Arizona School Risk Retention Trust to add liability coverage for third party claims related to COVID-19 and to use acknowledgement of risk forms with students. The endorsement would be retroactive from July 1, 2020 and effective through June 30, 2020 with an anticipated cost of $100,000 and not to exceed $150,000. Do I have a motion to adopt the recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion by uh, Dr. Hay, a second by Mr. Hanna. Is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Ms. Garcia? Aye. Okay. Anyone okay. opposed? All okay. right. Hearing none, the motion passes uh, unanimously. Uh, the next item is 4.2 priorities for academic operation and COVID 19 liability risk mitigation. Mr. Sylvan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So the purpose for this item was to provide the board an opportunity to give direction to college staff if based upon the presentation and discussion today, um, the board wanted to make significant changes to any of the priorities or goals um, that we've outlined that are informing the approach the college is using to operations for the fall 2020 academic term. So, uh, so a, a legitimate motion would just be to uh, for the board to, um, you know, recommend the adoption of the current plan without. Change. So, exactly. So that might be it. Or, for example, um, in the um, initial presentation, we talked about that the college has set sort of a twenty percent cap, as we think that's a number that we can be safely managed. Uh, that we're not under that. The board might having considered everything, think that that number could be a lot higher or maybe uh, the board's not comfortable with any on-site operations, for example. So anything along that spectrum, I think uh, that was the intent at least of this item. Again, given you've now had a lot of, a lot more details about kind of how the college, the parameters that the administration has set and the methods we're using to approach that. And if the board has, um, would like to change that in a significant way um, I wanted to make sure you had the opportunity to do that so that we could finalize or make significant changes in time for the start of the fall classes. Okay, so I would make a motion that the board affirms the um, academic operations and COVID-19 liability risk mitigation plan that's been presented today. Um, is there a second? Okay. Uh, a second by Dr. Hay. Um, and is there any discussion on the item? No. no. Oh, yeah, I, I would, um, I would like to ask that we, the board receive some regular reporting on uh, status and uh, some um, assurance that the protocols are being adhered to, that uh, some sense of, uh, of hey, we've had this number of violations of protocol, something just give us an idea of you know, as we all know, you put rules in place and then the longer they go on, the less they're adhered to. So I'd like to have some reassurance that that is happening before we all of a sudden hear about cases. So I'd like that to happen. So Mark, um, I have sent, I believe at least one report over the summer in terms of cases. Uh, it, would that meet your need in terms of what you'd like to know that's the first question. And then, then the, if it does, 
then what's the frequency you would like to receive that type of report. Now remember, we're now going back to having regular board meetings starting in a few weeks. So we certainly can have this as a standing item, whether there's something to report or not, uh, you know, we can determine that, but we can have it as a standing item. So you'll always get a verbal report. And then if you want more of that written piece that we've done earlier, we can certainly do that too. Mr. Ward um, has a comment. Yes, yeah, so Chancellor, just want to let you know that we actually, I, I sent a, a draft part to Dave and Dolores here earlier today. They have not seen all of the information that is put together, but we actually have a fully updated report. We just need to add a few things to it that we would have to you before the ending of this week uh, that you can see on cases respective to, to staff and faculty and students, and it's pretty thorough. So just want to let you know, we are we will have you something ready this week if the board would like to see that. And then also we have a, a, a tracking of at all the campuses of all of the unannounced visits. Uh, so we have a tracking sheet of all of that as well. Yes. yes. Mr. Yeah, Hanna, so, what would be your pleasure? So, I, you know, I, again, I don't want to get into the weeds and I don't want uh, it to be directing operations. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that we uh, hear if there's some systematic issues enforcing the protocol before there's cases. I, you know, I'd like to, you know, the cases are it's too late at that point. So yeah, uh, we have we will have that. We actually are showing we'll show you our protocols and how we're doing it, and also like Dave said, the data that we've collected, not just from our students and staff, but also what our police department is collecting, and so. The chancellor has asked that uh, we provide that information uh, throughout the month, you know, as we've gone along. Now, I know not everything has gone to you guys, but at the end of the day, we are ready for something like that if needed. And then board members, if we've seen a violation, then we have that tracking information. We've got the corrective action, what exactly we did. So so we, we to that information you're looking for, we're not only tracking it, but we're making changes as a result of it. So, Mr. Hanna, would would if we got a weekly report for the first month of classes, would that uh, provide you some level of assurance and that oversight? Would be, that would be right. Yes. Okay. Great. So, if we could, if we could add that, uh, if we could, as an amendment to the motion, that we would just add that a weekly report on Fridays uh, be sent to us with an update of sort of where we are in terms of potential violations to the policies and potential exposure. Uh, is that okay with the seconder, Dr. Hay? Yes. Okay. Are there any other comments? Okay. So um, before we vote, I will just uh, sort of provide a closing comment on this item. I really, again, want to just publicly acknowledge Chancellor Lambert and the entire um, administrative team for uh, really taking a very conservative approach that's put the health and safety of the Pima Community College community for, as the central priority uh, to make sure that everyone is protected. And, and I have to say, I'm really impressed with the plan. It looks like it goes well beyond CDC guidelines and really is developing new best practice uh, to assure um, that people can you know, come back to these in-person programs um, knowing that they are in the safest possible environment uh, given the current circumstances. So um, thank you all very, very much for your incredible hard work, uh, not just now, but you know, rapidly getting ready for summer, but to really be able to even bring in an additional increase of students, uh, even though modest for the fall. Um, I, this board is very appreciative. So thank you. So, so Damien, right. can I just echo that? Uh, I mean, the team is, you know, not just my immediate folks that report to me, but, but all the way down through the, you know, the VPs, the deans, to the faculty and the staff have worked really hard to create as safe of an environment as possible for our students. And so they all deserve kudos. Yeah. And I, like David, I don't go to all of them, but I do go through some walkthroughs just to see how things are. And it's very impressive what, what the employees of this college have done and how much they care about our students and, and one another's safety. Yeah, well, I, again, you know, lead to not just your immediate team, but again, to just echo that the entire institution and the work that everybody's doing to make sure that safety is the priority. And I want to thank my fellow board members, because from the very beginning, everyone on this board has, you know, stood by a, a philosophy of safety first. And I think that that's really provided uh, a really, you know, a guide star to this entire ordeal. 
Um, so thank you everybody for, you know, not only your early commitment, but staying strong to making sure that that's part of the model um, model of this uh, of this pandemic response. So thank you everybody and thank you Chancellor Lambert. So with that, um, we need a motion, we need a vote. So all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Ms. Garcia? Am I muted again? I think so. Just wanted to make sure you were comfortable with the aye. You're an aye vote? Yes, I'm an aye. Okay, and Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Okay, so uh, anyone opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, and we will uh, see you again very soon. Thank you, Bye, everybody. Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Stay safe.